Have you ever heard of I-bonds? Basically, series I-bonds are interest-bearing savings bonds issued by the United States government that cannot be traded on the open market. And bonds of this sort pay interest equal to the sum of a fixed rate and the rate of inflation, which is reset every six months. Now, investors in series I-bonds can expect a return on their money and inflation protection. For many, the fact that you have to wait 5 years before you can cash in your I-bonds is the single most aggravating thing about them. And in this video, I'll explain the process for purchasing annual I-bond allotments over $10,000. I'll also share some insider information about I-bonds that the Treasury doesn't want you to have, such as how to avoid a 3-month interest penalty if you cash them in early. Now, would it be wonderful if there were some way to avoid having to fork over the interest for those extra 3 months? It's a good question. And while it's true that you can't completely avoid penalties, there are ways to lessen them. The first approach to avoid paying too much interest on your I-bonds is to buy them towards the end of the month. This occurs due to a charming peculiarity of the interest payment schedule for I-bonds. And if you acquire I-bonds at the very end of the month, you will still receive interest for the full month, even if you technically only own them for a portion. Now, a word of caution. Purchasing I-bonds does take a day or two to settle. Therefore, please do not wait until the final day of the month do it. And you know, give yourself some wiggle room. Nevertheless, if you buy your I-bonds in the last few days of the month, you will receive interest for the whole month even if you have only held them for a few days. And if you decide you want to cash in your I-bonds before the 5-year period ends, you should do it at the beginning of a month. Once again, this is because you will receive interest for the entire month even if you have only had the I-bonds for a couple of days. It's also important to know that even if you just kept your I-bonds for a couple of days in the first month, you would have received a full month's interest on your initial purchase. And when you sell your I-bonds today, like before, you will receive interest for the whole month, even if you sell them on the first day of the month. So, with just a little bit of care when purchasing and selling your I-bonds, you may cut your interest penalty in half from 3 months to 1. Your next crucial step in optimizing your I-bond returns this again is related to the timing of your I-bond purchases. You should only invest in I-bonds in April and October. These months mark the conclusion of the I-bonds variable interest rate term. This is the point at which a rate change will occur in the near future. In addition, we can forecast the subsequent interest rate with reasonable accuracy thanks to the data we have on inflation over the last 6 months. This implies that regardless of whether you invest in I-bonds in April or October, you will get the same interest rate for the whole first year. That's why it's wise to buy I-bonds only in April and October when there's a lot more data available for analysis. And if you buy I-bonds during these months, you basically get a head start over anyone who waits until February or March. Now, before we continue, I want to thank you for getting this far. And if you want to know more about maximizing your I-bonds investment returns, then make sure to stick till the end. Now, it is well known that each individual may only purchase $10,000 worth of I-bonds in a given year. And if you really want to go all out, you may use your tax refund to purchase an additional $5,000 worth of I-bonds. But supposing you don't receive a tax return of $5,000? How can you invest more than $10,000 a year in I-bonds? There are several approaches you can take actually. But please remember that you should not use these strategies without discussing them with your tax advisor. If you often do not receive a tax refund, changing your tax withholding is one option to avoid hitting this ceiling. You can raise the amount withheld each pay period during the year. And in addition, you can invest an additional $5,000 in I-bonds on top of the $10,000 you're already allowed to buy with your tax return at the end of the year. Secondly, you can get past the $10,000 barrier by paying quarterly tax payments. So, in December, you can submit from 1040 ES for $5,000. 
But if you wait until spring to file your taxes, you can obtain a refund equal to the difference, which you can put towards buying the additional $5,000 in I-bonds. Since the I-bonds cap of $10,000 is per person, getting married is another option for those who wish to invest more than that amount. Therefore, if you and your spouse are both eligible, each of you can invest $10,000 in I-bonds during a marriage. So if you're a couple, it means you can invest $20,000 between you in I-bonds. But what if you want to invest more than $20,000 a year in I-bonds? But how would we go about doing that? If you acquire I-bonds for your kids, you can get them access to funds above $20,000. In principle, your kids are eligible for their own social security number, and as a result, the law permits you to lawfully spend $10,000 on I-bonds per child. Now, a word of caution, if you buy I-bonds for your grown children, you do so in their name, and the money belongs to them. And you should only acquire I-bonds for your children if you intend to give them financial support in this way. You may also be surprised to learn that a limited liability company or single proprietorship is eligible to purchase I-bonds, so self-employed people can buy I-bonds in denominations of $10,000 through their legal company. It's also possible to purchase an additional $10,000 in I-bonds via a revocable living trust, and that's an extra $20,000 if you and your partner both have trusts. That means a married pair with two separate businesses and two separate trusts might theoretically invest $70,000 a year in I-bonds. Now, everyone who has ever purchased I-bonds will confirm this, and to buy I-bonds, you must go via the government's Treasury Direct website, which looks and feels like it was built in 1995 and hasn't been updated. Now, the process of purchasing I-bonds through Treasury Direct is the most tedious element of the transaction. However, this is no longer the case. I'm not even referring to the fact that Treasury Direct has looked slightly different recently. I am referring to purchasing I-bonds through channels other than Treasury Direct. It's because you can now buy I-bonds from Yota Bank straight towards their website. In addition, Yoda Bank is an innovative new kind of bank that began as an online savings account. Yoda Bank, unlike traditional banks, offers a weekly contest with various rewards that increase your interest rate on your savings. How it works is that Yoda Bank randomly selects a number every day of the week. Now, at the end of the week, customers who match the most numbers are awarded cash awards in addition to their standard interest rate. In addition to a traditional savings account, Yota Bank has introduced a new option that allows you to invest in I-bonds through the company. Moreover, you don't have to deal with the treasury directly and incur any costs. Basically, Yota Bank is doing the grunt work of communicating with Treasury Direct on your behalf. The I-bonds will continue to be registered in your name, and Yota Bank will not have any ownership or profit participation and I-bonds are subject to the same regulations as before. So, what do you think of I-bonds so far? Do you think they're a good investment opportunity? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons as well. Now, if you want to know more about bonds, then make sure to click and watch this video right here and enjoy! And that's the end of this video guys, see you next time!